You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to a very invigorating episode of mm. Ask Drone You. I like it. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is an invigorating episode, number 636. We are really, really glad to be podcasting and hanging out with you guys and appreciate that you'd spend a few minutes of your day with us. We have a good question today because I think um, a lot of folks are in that place where they're wanting to move up from maybe doing some real estate and looking for other ways to uh, increase their drone business. And uh, this particular caller has a question about doing that. Well, it's a good question. And if you're thinking about getting into construction, you're probably going to want to take our intermediate mapping class because you're going to get details on doing maps in a way that you won't learn anywhere else. Um, Also in that class, we talk about deliverables to construction agencies, and it's really important how you deliver and the specific ways you do so. Highly recommend that class. It just goes into a lot deeper of what we're about to talk about. And the level of depth, we could not cover the level of depth and information that you would need to know in order to do some of these higher level jobs in construction mapping. Like, it would take us hours. I, literally, right. this podcast would be four or five hours long Yeah. to talk about every single point and process. I don't have that kind of time, Paul. I don't want to give that kind of time <laughs> unless it's in a class. I think we just said the same thing. <laughs> yes. Play that funky question. Ooh. G'day fellas, Raw here from Down Under. I'm 25 and I run Wyvern Aerial Media part-time. Been a drone new member for over eight months now. Look, I'm moving from real estate into construction, progress reports and such. I'm having trouble figuring out the major pain points that I can resolve with my service. I just wanted to know, how would you guys pitch to these companies? What should I highlight? And what problems do we solve as drone operators? Love your work. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you, Roy. I'd love to hear from uh, from the guys down under. It's very cool. And it's a good question. If you have a question, don't forget to go to astronew.com like Roy did. So you've actually had opportunity to talk to construction companies. Just kind of off the top, what have you told them? Like, what is one of the things that you say to them? Well, I personally don't go after construction uh, progression report jobs, um, but I've trained many people who do. In mm-hmm. fact, Joel Frazier is a great example because okay. Joel Frazier has a full-time salaried job now with Bradbury Stam as their drone videographer. I mean, cool. that's what he does. So that's so, a different path. Uh, it is a different path. Some of the same concepts, To go though. salaried, but actually, when we introduced that new producer yesterday, he actually took on a salaried job with a real estate firm as a drone pilot. Found, oh, I found that fascinating. That is fascinating. I found that really fascinating. Um, the salary wasn't as high as I thought it would have been, but still salaried position. Yeah. So, and I mean, it's kind of cool because he only does like three or four jobs a week for him. So he still has like the whole week open. Nice. <laughs> and it's just kind of fascinating. But anyway, in construction site mapping, uh, there are a very distinct parts of this job. There's taking pictures, doing the cardinal photos. A lot of people call it construction um, progression uh, information. In fact, Vic does this. He takes five photos at the cardinal directions, sends it in. Other people do actual maps of the site each and every week to measure exactly what has been done. Mm -hmm. They're also able to measure volumetrically how much material has been used for a specific part of the project and how much material is left over. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some very specific problems that uh, progression mapping and progression photos do for uh, construction clients, but also for the investors as a whole. A couple things. Number one, there's a big problem with subcontractors going into these bigger jobs and saying that they have done... Uh, they've done, let's say they said, okay, I went in and installed all the HVAC in building C and let's say there's five buildings in an apartment structure. Let's look at Broadstone. Okay. Right down in Louisiana that they're Mm -hmm. building. Right. Um, 
He says, so Rob, the HVAC guy, goes in there and he says, well, well, guys, I, I got the HVAC installed. It's looking good. But uh, you got to you gotta get those windows in for me to test it. <laughs> when really he's behind on his work and he's telling the guys like that he's done the job. They should install the windows so that he can do his HVAC pressure test, which yeah. if you're not familiar with the pressure test, it's just essentially are there a bunch of leaks in the building? Hmm. They don't even do this in New Mexico. Like hmm. our building standards are not the highest here Interesting. so um but they do oh. it in california they do it in virginia they do it in florida like in the bigger more populous states they do this hmm. um that being said if i am doing my construction progression reports and if i'm doing the mapping and let's say we're still just looking at the frame of the building which in most aspects of hvac you're going to have the framing and maybe the walls up and then they're going to put the siding up after that and like there are the, these things that have to go in chronological order when building to right. maintain the most efficient system. And I am not giving a good example with HVAC. So don't think that this is a real world example. It's not. I'm trying to showcase the example of the fact that in construction, things have to be done in a very specific order and a very right. specific manner. If one person shows up and can't do their work because another person hasn't finished their work, now you're paying for the guy to be there. The job is not getting done. The deadline gets pushed back. Right. Lose money, lose money, lose money. Okay? Okay. Where construction progression mapping and construction progression reports help is by showing the client every single week a permanent record of installation from subcontractors. Mm -hmm. So they get a real world, no BS. This is how much... Um, material we've used. This is how much is left over. This is what's been installed. This is what hasn't been installed. Now, if you really want to take it to the next level in progression reports and progression mapping, I think it's really cool if you were to do a marketing end of this. So that's why I said there's many distinct points and processes in which we can go with this. And one of them is also just collecting photos for investors' sake, for selling, but also doing hyperlapses. So if we yes. can actually showcase the, the progression of the, the building Literally, if we can showcase the progression. That's a great marketing piece for the construction company. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. So. Very cool. So one of the other things I'm thinking, because again, we're trying to help the construction company understand the value that this can bring, right? One of them, I think, would be to sell the idea that, look, you don't have to worry about sending people out and maybe even training your own person to fly a drone, because that is one of the things that a drone pilot such as Roy in Australia is going to have to deal with is a lot of these bigger construction companies in particular are going to say, oh, we got our own guy that can do that. Right? A lot of them are saying that now. So maybe it's the small to medium size that you're going to be working with, but yeah. you can let them know. I don't know. Maybe that's not true, but you, what you can do is let them know, look, you don't have to worry about it. I will be there every day. We'll agree on a time, not every day, every week or twice a week or whatever you need. I'm there. The videos and or photos show up in your inbox. Then you can do the billings that you need based on the progression that you see. I'm going to become part of your system to help you be more efficient. Mm -hmm, that's exactly right. But the biggest the biggest piece and part of that process is the deliverable. Because mm -hmm. a lot of guys are like saying, well, I can take the photos, I can do the maps, but I'm having trouble... Uh, integrating this with the construction clients themselves because they want to run their own measurements. They want to do volumetric measuring. They want to do this. They want to do that. And in all honesty, uh, sometimes it's hard to give someone a map that they know how to open, right. let alone know how to measure, let alone want to be able to visualize said thing. Most people, clients that I know are like, well, I want to see the high resolution map mm -hmm. and I want to measure from it. And it's like, well, visualizing and measuring are t technically two different maps. And yes, for those advanced mappers out there, I understand that you can do a 3D point cloud with a mesh overlay and a DXF file, but a lot of clients don't know how to set up their um, SolidWorks or AutoCAD uh, viewers to actually see that 3D point cloud as a mesh overlay. And that's going to be quite a bit more expensive for that kind of deliverable. Exactly. And you know, the next question is, is like, okay, is the client using Autodesk? Is the client using ArcGIS? Is the client using SolidWorks? What is the client using to see the deliverable because mm -hmm. if it's more than just photos and you're delivering maps so that they can actually get measurable data out of it, you're looking at a whole new ball game. Right. Which may very well be necessary in some of the larger projects. Which if it were me, I would work in with these clients to do the construction progression pictures. Mm -hmm. And then I would also say that I would do the maps for them and then do the hyperlapse without them knowing about it. And then at the end, show them the hyperlapse and be like, yeah, if you want that, it's 1500 more. 
Right. You know what I mean? Because all you're doing is taking advantage of the time on site that you have. And as long as you have completed the deliverables as stated, I think you should totally go above and beyond, get this data, show it to them, say, hey, not only am I a mapper, but I can also focus on your marketing. Mm -hmm. The guy is going to be like, wow, you are such a blessing to me, you know? So it's all about the value you give to other people, but it's also about how they perceive the value. Right. And I think it's really important that because I can provide drone you with a data set of how many members we have, how often they click, where they click on the website, where they go, how long they stay there, all that. And if I give you that data set, you're like, Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, like, uh, what do I do with it? Yeah. What's but the if, action? But if I say I've got a data set that measures where people go on the site, how long they watch videos, how long they retain a member on DroneU, and honestly, what are the trigger points to as to why they leave or cancel, then that data set means something totally different to you, right? It's you're now perceiving that as here's how I can measure why people are leaving, when people leave, how long people stay, and I can get better business analytics to make better decisions to provide more value to right. the member, right? Sure. It's all about how you communicate the story. Yeah, absolutely. And, and help the interpretive process. True. Mm -hmm. For sure. Which I'm excited that if we get Chris Sheridan on board. Um, Not if, but when. Oh, excuse me. Uh, to have him do that <laughs> class on storytelling because, sorry, I'm getting lost in thought over here because really storytelling is so much more important than just giving stories in your videos. Uh, life is a story. Which, and, interestingly, a hyperlapse of new construction is a form of storytelling. Agreed. Because it's growth that. over time. Yeah. Gosh. From Agreed. nothing to something beautiful and the whole story that, and, and really the story starts well before the construction started and goes well after the construction ends. True. Anyways, like cool reclamation. stuff. reclamation. Yeah. I mean, we could go on for days about this. Yeah, so. absolutely. If what? you guys are interested in mapping, by the way, um, the new intermediate mapping course is coming out on DroneU. It'll probably be a month or two before it is there. If you haven't taken the introduction to mapping course with Doug Lafarge, highly recommend it. Talks about, again, different apps. Because with mapping, it's not about just using Ground Station Pro. It's not about just using SiteScan. It's not about using Maps Made Easy. It's not about using Pix4D Mapper. Like each application has its pros and its cons and you can only get certain data out of certain applications and you don't need to spend five thousand dollars to do perimeter scans just fyi so these are things that we're talking about and that we're teaching now and i, I think it's really good for people to know those intricacies and nuances that again that you could only learn by doing yeah absolutely for sure don't you don't have to waste your time and do it yourself learn from our mistakes boom Everybody wins. Drone you in a nutshell. You, that's right. <laughs> anyway, um, well, so I interrupted you. You were about to say something. No, no, no. Actually, I wanted to kind of circle back just a little bit because when I said that some of the larger companies are probably going to be using their own drone guy, you kind of went, eh. So I want to know what your thought was in that moment. Well, I only know one person that is salaried. Mm -hmm. um, I know one group that's trying to hire drone pilots to build a team. They've asked us for consulting help with that. But most people that I know in mapping are doing it as business owners. Mm -hmm. They're taking on a lot of clients. Ed, example. Yeah. Yeah, no. And I think I'm just thinking, because I know of a couple of the larger construction companies, and I think they've got guys that they didn't bring on to be the drone pilot. They're maybe a, I don't know, a young millennial or something and they just have a propensity and the guy says hey i can do that and so they give that guy an opportunity and maybe he gets his 107 maybe not but anyways and uh, where most of these people fail that are not trained in mapping is the deliverable i can't tell you how many contracts i've yeah. won just by saying like well that's how they deliver it that's the quality you're getting here's this quality and here's how you're going to get it right. and every single time i've done that we've won the contract sure and which is even funnier because people have talked a lot of crap about us That's okay. and our ability. But you know what? It goes to show focus on quality. And you know what? Another thing, literally another thing, if you're focusing on your quality, if you're focusing on doing the right thing in time, things work out. That's why patience is profit. Focus on quality, focus on doing the right thing, but also be able to communicate why you're different. And when people speak negatively about you and do all this, don't focus on it. Let them ruin themselves. It's just a matter of time. Let it happen. Yeah, people see through that. They do. They but people need constant reminders too. They're like, don't let it get to you. I Absolutely. do. I do too. Look at me an hour ago. I do too. <laughs> anyway, <right>. so <laughs> we're all growing every day. 
That's going to do it for us today. If you're not a member of Drone U, I ask you, well, why? Don't you want to be in the secret community? <laughs> Motivating and inspiring you, answering your questions, lowering the learning curve, and giving you access to people who are experienced in this business? Because it's the one thing that Drone U has that a lot of other schools don't, and that is constant education with constant engagement and interaction to make sure that you get the most out of the training. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone U. Ask Drone U.